We're doing sunscreen reviews! Yay! It's Michelle of Lab Muffin Beauty Science, Chemistry PhD, Cosmetic Chemist and Sunscreen Connoisseur. Today I'm talking about a bunch of international sunscreens I've tried recently. All of these are quite popular on social media. There's two from Haruharu, Haru, this video sponsor. The rest are sunscreens that I picked up when I was in the US a little while back for open source. I've been dying to try out some of these for years and I know that a lot of us sunscreen nerds are not really that into US sunscreens, but honestly, it didn't go that badly, not as badly as I expected anyway. I'm going to start with the Haruharu Haru Wonder Black Rice Moisture Aerofit Daily Sunscreen. This is a Korean chemical sunscreen with a different formula from a lot of the ones that are really popular at the moment. I think most people have heard about this like family of Korean chemical sunscreens that are sort of like variations on a theme. They use this blend of filters. They each have slightly different skincare ingredients and textures and they are some of my favorite sunscreens of all time. But some people have told me that they don't really like these formulas. They can have white cast on darker skin probably because of that MBBT filter. It is a chemical or organic sunscreen but it is in particles so it scatters more visible light. Some people don't like the texture and some people just find them kind of boring. So this Haru Haru sunscreen is an alternative chemical sunscreen formula which uses these different filters. And you will notice there is no MBBT there. So this one has zero white cast on me and I've seen reviews from people with darker skin saying it has no white cast on them as well. It's also made by Colma, which is the big Korean sunscreen manufacturer that makes a lot of the really popular Korean sunscreens. I'd say this is on the more moisturizing and creamy end of Korean chemical sunscreens, but it is still really lightweight with a cream gel moisturizer consistency. It applies really smoothly and feels hydrating without being greasy. And it leaves a slightly tacky, moisturized feeling on your skin. I think a lot of people underestimate the importance of the inactives in a product when it comes to the texture and the overall experience of a sunscreen. So I'm gonna talk a little bit more about them. And this is actually like one of the few times I think reading the ingredients list can be kind of helpful. To get the cream gel consistency, which is popular in so many Asian skincare products, not just with sunscreens, but also with like moisturizers, formulas usually use a polymeric emulsifier. That means it will hold the oily and watery parts of a product together Together without needing as much of those traditional emulsifiers which can feel a bit thick and heavy. Closer to the top of the ingredients list for this is polyglycerol 3 diesterate. This goes on a little bit shiny but it sinks in pretty quickly and it glides on just so smoothly. There's no fragrance and it doesn't pill on me and it sits really nicely under my makeup. In terms of other skincare actors, this has ceramides as well as niacinamide and adenosine. And that's what makes this a triple functional cosmetic in Korea. In other words, as well as being an SPF, it's also brightening and anti-wrinkle. Haru Haru also has this other sunscreen, which is the Black Rice Pure Mineral Relief Daily Sunscreen. This is another fragrance-free sunscreen and it mostly uses zinc oxide as well as an SPF booster. This goes on with a bit of white color which is what you expect from a zinc oxide sunscreen, but it dries down to only a tiny amount of white cast. It is as good as I've tried with any untinted zinc oxide sunscreen. The finish is not very greasy. It's more of like a hydrated finish and it is slightly slidey. So you can blend out any white streaks pretty easily after it's mostly dried down. Again, this has a cream gel consistency and it uses a polymeric emulsifier. This one is a little bit worse. Just in terms of like reading it, it's polyglycerol 3 polydimethyl Siloxy ethyl dimethicone. I personally tend not to prefer mineral sunscreens, but this is one of my favorite formulas so far. Again, it's from Colma, and I just feel like they really know how to make good sunscreens that people enjoy using. It's also got niacinamide, hyaluronic acid, and I think that's what contributes to this being not too drying and not too greasy. It is just hydrated, which is pretty rare with mineral sunscreens on my skin. I always love a good pump container with my sunscreens. I find them really nice and easy to dispense, and you can easily work out how many pumps you need to use. I personally have this problem and maybe you do too. I kind of accidentally just start using less and less sunscreen over time and I don't necessarily notice and every once in a while I'll have to recalibrate how much sunscreen I'm using. So pumps are really good for that because then you can just say I will always put on x number of pumps which I've measured out once and never have to measure again. For my face these ones I would need three pumps and it would be three to six pumps probably for most people depending on the size of your face. And it also depends on how much of your hands you use to apply because that will also count as extra surface area and it can be quite quite a lot. 
Both of these are available from their official Amazon page and the links are in the description. I picked up a whole bunch of popular US sunscreens to try and this is really not meant to be like a comparison video because it would be pretty unfair to compare US sunscreens with Korean sunscreens. They have different filters and very different regulations. So really this is like a good opportunity for me to get a bunch of sunscreen reviews out there because I have a bunch piled up that I just haven't released. First we have the Supergoop Unseen Sunscreen. This is a really popular US sunscreen. I got a little variety pack from Sephora which actually has really nice kits and really nice like gift sets. It's so much nicer than Australia. My Australian phone number actually worked in their loyalty card system which was pretty cool and I got like a little birthday gift which was nice. I don't know, I feel like we don't have things like that in Australia. Anyway, this is SPF 40, it's PA with three pluses and it is water resistant for 40 minutes which is quite unusual for a face sunscreen so I quite like that. This is a chemical sunscreen and the filters are, I'm going to put them up here. The formula is really interesting. It is a water-free silicone based formula and when you squeeze it out it is completely clear. This sort of formula is usually used in pore filling makeup primers and honestly I don't really like these formulas. I find them really hard to apply or rather they're kind of too easy to apply so they glide on really nicely but I can't get the full amount onto my face. So for my sunscreen reviews, I always weigh out the right amount of sunscreen for my face each time just so that everything is equal and fair. With these sorts of formulas, it kind of feels like I'm spreading icing on my face and it feels like it's sitting on my skin in a really thick layer, sort of like I'm slugging and it's not sinking in and I'm just like moving it around endlessly. It does sink in a bit. These formulas use a lot of isododecane as the solvent, which is volatile and so that evaporates as the sunscreen dries down. As you're applying it, there is like this sort of solventy smell, but that goes away pretty quickly. One thing I do really appreciate about these silicone formulas is how matte they are when you put them on. They can get shiny after a few hours if you're quite oily, but they are pretty impressive with the mattifying effect. But on my skin at least, it kind of feels like it just doesn't ever set properly. It feels like I have this film on my skin, even though it does look matte. It just sort of feels greasier than it looks. I also feel like some of it comes off on my fingers when I brush against it even hours later. But if you have dry skin, these do tend to do better and they have a really nice smoothing sort of makeup priming effect. So yeah, I can see why this is so popular. I think a lot of people would love this sort of formula, but it's just not really for me. Next we have the Trader Joe's Daily Facial Sunscreen. This is very clearly designed to be a dupe of the Unseen Sunscreen. It has a really similar ingredient list. It really annoys me when people say two products are dupes when they're designed completely differently with like different classes of ingredients and the only thing they have in common is literally they are both sunscreens or they are both micellar waters. But this and the Unseen Sunscreen are actually functional dupes. They have the same SPF, they have the same water resistance, they are both broad spectrum. They do have have slightly different active concentrations although they are the same active so there is a little bit of a difference but the biggest difference is the price. This is $9 for 50 mils versus I mean this is a tiny one but if this was 50 mils it would be $38. So like the Unseen this has that clear formula it's silicone-y it is water-free it starts off with a slightly stronger solvent smell that goes away again pretty quickly after you start rubbing it in. When you squeeze this out it has a slightly less smooth texture than the Unseen and it feels a little bit thicker and heavier on my skin. But honestly the difference is not that big so this is definitely worth a try if you think this sort of formula might work for your skin. It is really popular, it works well for some people. I just prefer products that are a bit lighter on the silicones and they're more of that cream gel moisturizer feeling rather than like a primer. With these two sunscreens I personally didn't have any eye sting but I know some other people have. I am really curious if anyone has tried these two before and seen any difference because yeah, I did not see one. Next we have the Supergoop Glow Screen. This came in the pack with the Unseen and the shade I got is Sunrise. I've seen some people say that this is the glowy version of Unseen. I don't know exactly what they meant by that, but this is a really different formula. This has a cream gel formula, but it feels very different on the skin compared to those other cream gel sunscreens I've talked about today. And that's because it has a lot of makeup style pigment and effect particles in it. And that's all the bismuth oxychloride, mica, titanium dioxide, and iron oxides that are listed in the 
the ingredients list. I actually prefer the texture of this during application more than with the Unseen. It is a lot easier to get that full amount onto my face. But after it dries down, it does feel very noticeable on my skin, probably because of all those shimmer particles and the stuff keeping the shimmer spread out. And we need to talk about the shimmer because it is just too much if you use like a sunscreen amount. When you use enough to get that full SPF 40 protection, it looks properly metallic. If you apply a really tiny bit, so a primer amount, then it gives you a really beautiful glow, but yeah, not with the full amount. And there's also this tint, which dried kind of orange. And again, I don't think this is an issue if you use a lot less, but sunscreen amounts, no. Maybe it might work if you just happen to be that exact shade, but I think this product is just better suited for people who are looking for a primer with some SPF protection and a glow rather than a sunscreen. So yeah, I wouldn't consider this a sunscreen really. I would call this a primer with SPF. I am really curious to know if anyone does like the glow screen when they're applying the right amount. I feel like a lot of people just aren't applying enough, but yeah, let me know in the comments. Next, we have the Blue Lizard Sensitive Mineral Sunscreen. I had to buy this when I was in the US as like a souvenir because it's Australian sunscreen, but it is not Australian. Apparently it did originate in Australia, but you cannot buy this in Australia. It's not on the Australian register of sunscreens. And that Blue Lizard is not an Australian species. Pro tip, if something is blue in Australia, it is probably tiny and surprisingly dangerous and you should get the hell away from it. As an Australian, the branding is just a bit weird, but it is really interesting to see what Americans think of Australians. This is meant to be one of the nicer mineral sunscreens that you can get in stores in the US. It's got 80 minutes water resistance, which is nice. That's the highest you can get there. The ingredients, which kind of worried me a bit, was titanium dioxide 8% and zinc oxide 10% and no SPF boosters that I can see. So this should be a very safe option for people who have a lot of chemical sunscreen allergies, but yeah, the fear for me is really just white cast. So during application, this gave me a ton of white cast, but it did settle down surprisingly well after a bit. It does end up greasy and there were like little white flecks on my skin, but overall, I was really impressed by how well this went for an untinted mineral sunscreen with no boosters. It also has this cap, which is pretty cool. It changes color in UV, which is kind of fun if you go into the sun. My partner did use this on a beach day and he absolutely hated it. It just ruined his day because it doesn't spread well and it was white and it kind of just drags on your skin. It takes a lot of effort to spread. But this is a good thing for face sunscreens because it means you don't have that problem with the whole sliding icing thing on your face when you're applying it. The final greasiness was quite a lot on my skin and Although I was impressed by the lack of white cast or relative lack of white cast, I wouldn't wear this again by choice. It's just not good for my skin. It might be better if your skin is dry. And again, it is one of the few options for people out there where you don't have any SPF boosters at all. But I have talked to a few people who have a lot of chemical sunscreen allergies and they've told me that Asian chemical sunscreens actually work pretty well for their skin. So I think that's also worth considering if you haven't gone down that road before. Blue Lizard do also have a sheer lotion which is designed for the face. It's a bit more expensive, but it has less of those active ingredients. They were out of stock when I looked for it, but that might be a bit of a promising option. Hopefully it is a bit more wearable. This was a little bit annoying to remove because it is water resistant and greasy, but it wasn't too bad when I used a cleansing oil first. Next, we have the Australian Gold Botanical 50 Tinted Face. This is the Fair to Light BB Cream. Again, this is not an Australian sunscreen. It is not sold in Australia. The brand actually originated in Florida. I think on the front here, these are meant to be gum leaves, which are Australian, but the leaves are like not quite right. They're like not quite the right shape and actual gum leaves don't have these like bold sideways branching veins. Lab Muffin Beauty Science Australiana Connoisseur. This is SPF 50, broad spectrum. It's also 80 minutes water resistant and it's got zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. There are, I think, three shades available and this was a pretty good color match for my skin. I would imagine that you would have to have a pretty good shade match for a product like this. The color did dry down slightly darker and a little bit more orange than when I was applying it, so test it out carefully on your skin before you commit. It has eucalypt extract and it does smell and feel a little bit minty on the skin. The main thing that stood out to me with this was how matte it dried. It actually blew my mind a bit. It's like the opposite experience to the Blue Lizard. That tint, once it dried down, just did not budge. So if you have it a bit streaky, then that's not great. It is very much like a foundation or like maybe even paint. So make sure you spread it out really well. It is a bit more drying than I like and it feels a bit like I have a clay mask on, but 
It is also less drying than I expected for that level of matte and non-shiny and feel. I was expecting it to really like give me fine lines and maybe crack a little bit and maybe go a bit powdery, but no, it was just like really matte. After a few hours, I did see a little bit of oil breakthrough around my forehead and my nose, but it was just really impressive how matte it stayed. I don't think I've ever had that even with makeup. I can imagine that some people are really after this sort of finish. So yeah, I am actually really impressed with this. I haven't had a chance to try it out on a really hot and sweaty day yet. So I'm curious to see how it holds up and what it looks like after there is a ton of oil and sweat. And I think this goes without saying, but do not use this if you have dry skin. I really don't think it'll work well for you. Maybe you can lay a moisturizer underneath and make it workable, but yeah, it is matte. Have I said that enough? It is matte. Getting this off my skin was surprisingly not that bad. I just used a cleansing oil, the Skin 104 one, and a gel cleanser, and that just completely got rid of it. I talked a little bit about US filters today, so if you wanna find out more about whether or not they're safe, they are safe. I have a video about that here. You can also check out my latest list of top sunscreens and those are both linked in the description.